Well, good morning, Lionhearts. I have decided to make my way to Pigeon Forge for the meetup, but I'm stopping to see Johnny Cash along the way. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. So we're making a couple of stops in Hendersonville to make this happen. Figure you guys won't mind, will ya? All right, it's a rainy day, but we have found it, and we're gonna go visit Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash. And my map said that it was right off of Johnny Cash Parkway. Interesting. Now the reason that Johnny Cash is buried out here is because this was pretty much his adopted home. He was born in Arkansas and then with his family, once they made it big in Memphis, they moved out to Encino and then they moved out to Casita Springs and I showed all the haunts of Johnny out there. But once he fell in love with June Carter, 1968 they got married and they moved it all out here. So they had a house up there on a hill that we're going to, uh, well I'll take you out to where it was, it burned down. It, uh, it was purchased after Johnny passed away by Barry Gibb and that was Johnny and June's retreat here in Hendersonville. So not too far from where Johnny's buried is Luther Perkins. Johnny got his start with Sun Records of course and he went in there with Marshall Grant and Luther Perkins. It was Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two and then eventually they added a third and it became the Tennessee Three but here he is, the great Luther Perkins. Credited with creating the Boom Chicka Boom guitar style where he would mute a couple of the strings while he played. It says, love and music fill my heart. And Johnny is right over here, just on the other side of these bushes. Sadly, Luther Perkins died the same year that June Carter and Johnny Cash got together. And if you'd like to see where Marshall Grant is buried, go back to a couple of vlogs ago when I was visiting Isaac Hayes' grave. I showed Marshall, he's also part of the Tennessee too. So right over here where these girls are is where Johnny and June are buried, and right beside him is Merle Kilgore. Merle is the guy who, well, it's a little contentious, but um, either way, Merle had a hand in writing Ring of Fire. Now, the contention is that Vivian in her book says Johnny wrote it with Merle at Lake Casitas, and June is credited with writing it with Merle Kilgore, so who knows? And then as we move over here, we have some of the Carters, Ezra Carter, Mother Maybell, that's June's mom. The first lady of country music, God has picked his wildwood flower. And then Anita. And then as you come over here, here's Johnny and June with wildwood flower and I walk the line on the headstone behind the little bench. You can see, and this bench is also Merle Kilgore's, as you can see. It says, more and more, Johnny Reb, Wolverton Mountain, Ring of Fire. And those boots are just great. So here they are, together forever, the way it should be. Yep, Johnny was raised in Arkansas, and boy, what a weird life. His brother died when he was young. And his dad would even say to him, should have been you. Actually, he didn't go by John, then he went by JR. Then he went into the military when he came out. Got that audition with Sam Phillips, his son, and the rest was history. He eventually became 90 million selling record recording artist. He was out touring with the Carter family, met June. Grand Old Opry used to tour with the Carter family and then fell in love with June. And they spent the rest of their life together. And what's weird is they had a um, they had a vacation home in Jamaica and that they were actually robbed. Three men came in, held the family at gunpoint, uh, never ended up hurting anyone, but Johnny uh, 
actually felt bad for the men and asked for them to get leniency. Uh, he just, he felt that there must have been something driving them to it. And he always just had like one of those forgiving hearts. Also, fantastic artist. The guy was really great at writing poetry, painting, drawing. He was really, really great. And then of course, June Carter, voice of an angel, says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. She was a big star before she even was with Johnny Cash. They were stars together. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And when June passed away, actually when she was sick, she told John to keep living. She told him to, she wanted him to keep doing things, bringing good to the world. And when she passed away, he gave an emotional speech, her funeral, and then went right to work, working on a new album. He said that was the only way he could get any solace or peace was to do that. And he said that's what he thought that June would want. So the house that they lived out their married days in together burned down. But uh, I believe they have a sign up because their next door neighbor was Roy Orbison. And I think they all have a sign out there. So we'll go out to that property and visit. Rest in peace, John and June. I Walk the Line, Orange Blossom Special, Folsom Prison. <laughs> Man, Boy Named Sue just made a lot of great music. A lot of great songs that he sang that nobody else could have brought that genius to. That, I mean, he just brought Boy Named Sue to life. He didn't write it, but boy, I don't think anybody could have done it as good as him. Ring of Fire, I Walk the Line. Great career. All right, we're going out to the houses. Take care, Merle Kilgore. Here lies a beautiful dreamer, singer, songwriter, entertainer, and loved by all with a great ring collection and one happy smile. And even though they don't let you film there, I will give props to the Johnny Cash Museum in Nashville. They do have a fantastic collection of Johnny's entire career. If you love Johnny Cash, you definitely do want to check out that museum. And I did do a picture vlog of it, so go look up Johnny Cash Museum on my channel if you'd like to see what's in there. All right, we turned down Caudill. That's where they all lived. Many decades. It is beautiful. I don't know who lives here, but I'm kind of jealous. Wow, that is nice. So on the other side of this fence is Johnny Cash and June's former property. Now a lot of crazy stuff has went on. Now I heard that a guy had purchased this land and was going to open a kind of like a rehab facility that a lot of the neighbors weren't happy with it, but that I think John Cash Johnny and June's son had said, well, my dad would love that. He would absolutely love that his property was turned into an old retreat, but the house burned down. You can see a little bit of the structure and everything where things would have been. Burned down when Barry Gibb owned it, and there was a famous rock wall that Johnny liked to walk beside and think. So they donated that whole wall to the John Cash, Johnny Cash Museum in Nashville and recreated the whole thing. So you can actually see the way it's supposed to be. Now what I've heard is that, um, that I guess a husband and wife have purchased this land now and they're going to build something on it. So either way, it's nice to know that the property is being used. And it was up here at this house that Johnny Cash would talk about when Graham Nash and Eddie Rabbit and Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell would all come out here, hang out and record in his studio. Bob Dylan recorded Nashville Skyline back here. 
gonna show you as much as I can. And then right next door, his neighbor was his good pal, Roy Orbison. And that was Roy Orbison's house that was known as The Orchard. If you've ever read anything about that or heard anything about that. And if you don't know who Roy Orbison is, holy cow. Pretty woman, or uh, oh pretty woman. <laughs> Only in dreams. Crying. Yeah, don't try and break in, but uh, you can see a little bit. In there. And then if you come down here, they actually have a sign on this little guard shack thing that says that it was the cash home. And you can see what's left of the property from here. I'm telling you, I'm not gonna do it, but it is tempting just to hop over that little barrier and go look around, but ain't worth the trouble. So right here, the trouble that it can bring you is what I mean. Right here's the sign. This is the cash home referred to as nature's house. Builder Braxton Dixon designed the cash home. Rugged beauty existed with open rafters, barn boards, and wall of native limestone. 14,000 square foot home overlooked Old Hickory Lake with panoramic views and gardens that stretched across the property. Here Johnny and June Carter Cash entertained family, friends, and neighbors for 35 years. Cash home also served as a retreat for fellow musicians to gather and compose music with one another until 2003 deaths of June and Johnny. Yeah, it's another crazy thing that uh, just a couple of months after June passed away, John followed. And you can see a little bit of the old structures back there that made up the property, that rock work. All right, let's go next door and check out Roarbson's property. That also burned down. But I believe Johnny bought that property. So we'll continue on up the road. And as I'm walking by, I notice you can actually see somebody out there fishing in a boat <laughs> in the water. See like a little orange hat down there. It's a pretty good view of the walkway up to the house that would have been there, the cash property. Now we're coming up to a kind of a fancy gate. This looks like this was still on the cash property. Cash Carter, Carter Cash. And Roy's was the next one over. Now we're coming upon a couple of signs here. It says restoring the orchard. After Johnny Cash's passing in 2003, Caudill Drive neighbors Marty Stewart and Connie Smith purchased this site from John Carter Cash and restored its then withering fruit trees, rotting railroad ties, and damaged turf. Cool. While relocating the fence line to its new position by the Evergreen, Stewart designed the gate that now serves as the site's entrance and added the cross that marks this space as sacred ground. Stewart also honored Johnny Cash's promise to Roy Orbison never to build on this site was kept. Then right next to it is the other sign that says the orchard. This pristine site overlooking Old Hickory Lake and its roots in tragedy. In 1968, Johnny Cash's good friend Roy Orbison sold him the land after fire destroyed his home and took two of his three sons' lives. Cash promised Orbison never to build on the site. 
when the abundant fruit trees and grapevines that flourished were maintained personally by the Cash family, the orchard came to fruition. And then from over here where the orchard sign is that I read you, this is another famous house right across the street. Now right up by the front door of this house has a placard as well. I may have said it was the Carter house. I meant it was the Cash house. This was the home that Johnny bought for his folks. So they lived directly across the street. I didn't want to go up there because somebody obviously lives in the house, but you can see there's a historic placard up there that says it's the Cash house. See how close we can really get with this thing. That's it. So as I'm walking back to my car, I'm looking on the old cash property, I think. I heard that the studio did survive. That might be it right there. I thought that John Cash, the son of John and Johnny and June, I believe he still owns it. I'm no expert, but over there by that flagpole in there, it looks like a bunch of cannonballs. All right, we're out of here. Off to Pigeon Forge. Welcome to Wilson County. I'm mighty proud to be here. So just another three hours of this and we'll be there. Go ahead and grab a book. I'll wait. The Great Smokies are calling. That's what all the billboards keep saying. That's a really cool Ripley sign up there. I love it. I'd say we made it. All right, I made it to my room and I'm gonna call it a day. I have a big, big vlog to make tomorrow with all the people that, well, hopefully some of you are coming to meet me <laughs> here in Pigeon Forge, but if not, it'll be a lonely vlog and a short vlog, but I think I have a big day of meeting a lot of you tomorrow or when I post this video for you next. And I'm looking forward to it. So have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Joshua Sweeney and Stephen Borey for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing where Johnny Cash and Roy Orbison live, getting to see Johnny Cash and June Carter's headstones, Merle Kilgore. I think it was a pretty fun day. Let's not forget Luther Perkins. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>